everyone, you're with Lucy from Art Shed Angel in Dungie, Australia, and I'm so glad to have you in the studio with me. So today I'm going to do some face drawing. So a lot of people love to do different faces and things like that, so I'm going to do some face drawing my way and show you just some easy ways to do it. So if you like my videos, please click that button below and subscribe to me and click that bell so you get videos. I'm going to be making videos often and I'd really hope that you join me on, in watching them. I also make live videos in my Facebook group called Live Art Journaling and Self Development and you are so very welcome to join. The link is also below. So now, let's draw a face. So today I'm going to be using some watercolors. I'm going to be using um, a pencil. So the first thing I have here is I have a piece of watercolor paper. Now you could be doing this on any kind of paper and you could be coloring on in with pencils if you like. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this and just so that I can do some playing and I maybe actually make it into a page. So the first thing I want you to do, and you would have seen this in some of my other videos, is to draw an oval. Now I'm going to do this quite large and you want this oval to be quite symmetrical. So if you need to make a template, do so. Okay, and then I'm going to draw a line down the center. Now I'm only going to draw a light line, but you can imagine there's a line down the center. And then I'm going to draw a line down the center this way. And if you need to get a ruler and measure that, please do so, because it's really important. This line is incredibly important because it's where your facial features will go. Because what we want to do is create a face that is symmetrical. So then I'm also going to do halfway between this spot and the bottom of the chin, I'm also going to mark the halfway point. And then I'm going to mark the halfway point between this point and the bottom of the chin. So we have some marks there. Now these marks are really important because they're going to be for placing. We're going to place the nose on this point. So the ball of the nose, I'm just drawing a light ball here. We are not going to keep the whole ball. The ball is actually going to give us something to position. So then I'm going to do a little line across there and I'm going to seat two balls at a pretty much half the size of the big one and they can overlap a little bit. So that's the basis of my nose. But that is not how we're leaving the nose. So what we need to do now is put the nostrils in. And that fits just in that curve where the two balls join together. And so that is the bottom of the nose there. Now once you have that shape, you no longer need the line above from the ball because a nose isn't really a ball shape. So that's just to give you that. So make sure you don't forget to rub those lines out because you don't need those little lines. You'll keep the side ball, but you don't need to keep this round circle, okay? Because a nose does not have a line upwards. A nose is something that sticks out and has a shape like a prism. So we don't want to end up with a nose that has that. Now, we're also going to do some eyes. And what I think is really important is that you do measure this. So if you are going to do eyes, I'm going to say to you, we're going to do real quirky eyes on this girl. So I'm going to do the eyes more than an eye apart, but I'm going to take that measurement that I have there and put it there. Because one of the things that we do do when we draw is we forget that we need to make things line up. So I've seen a lot of noses that have not been in the middle of faces. That's really important. This girl is looking straight at us. We want to have her nose in the right spot. So I'm going to do quite big eyes and take them all the way to the side here. And normally you would have a special measurement for eyes, but we're doing something fun and quirky here so we can play around a little bit. Now I'm going to then do a little line here and a little line there. 
and those lines are pretty much the same angle. Then I'm going to do a curve at the top of both of them to that corner spot. Now, if you are worried that you are not going to get those measurements right, one of the things you have is you have this line, you've got that point, you're doing this from the top of that point, these should be the same size. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a tear duct. Now this is important, that tear duct. Have a look at the person in front of you or have a look at a photo of a person and you will see that everybody has that tear duct. Now I've actually just decided I might make these eyes just a little bit bigger. So if you want to make your eyes a bit more um, wide open, so I'm going to make them a little bit more wide open. So I'm doing bigger eyes. These are going to be big chunky eyes so that I can show you how to colour them. And again I'm taking now these lines away before I do too much else because otherwise I won't be able to rub them out later. So when we do the eyeball, so this is the iris. When we do the iris, the iris is okay to touch the bottom, but it should hang over the top. So let's pretend that that was all the way to there. And I'm going to draw that little bit there. So the eyeball does not sit, I'm just going to do an example, the eyeball does not sit inside there. Can you see how that looks like it's really staring? So an eyeball, or the iris, needs to sit so that it looks like it's sitting on that bottom lid and it would go underneath. Because your eye is round, it goes underneath. Now, I've just drawn that little line in there, but you wouldn't be keeping that. And the important thing, and why I've drawn that line in there, is to show you that when I now do the pupil, the pupil must be in the centre of the iris. I'm seeing a lot of people doing this, this here. So... We're putting the pupil in the middle of the eye and not in the middle of the iris. So your pupil must be in the middle of the iris. It's like a camera lens. It, you've got to have that in the right spot. So we've got those eyes in place. We can get rid of those extra lines. And then I'm going to do an eyelid. Now an eyelid pretty much is where that eyeball would have um, stopped. So we're doing a little bit of an eyelid. This looks a little bit too big. And you can do that little line there because you can't, you don't have white inside of that section there. So she's starting to look a little bit like, like a girl. Now, I'm also going to do eyebrows. Now eyebrows sit on the bone. So in this case, I'm going to put her eyebrows. Now this is always a challenge to do the other one, isn't it? So don't be scared to turn your work. I need to turn my work. So it sits on the bone and you can see that my eyebrows aren't like this so I haven't just got a curve like that because the true if you look at a skull it has that kick down there which is pretty much going around your face so we have eyes we have an eyebrow we have the nose and we've made sure that that nose is in the middle of the face which is really really important so let's make some lovely chunky lips for her so this little line that we did earlier, that's actually the line that's in the middle of her mouth. And I'm going to do a Cupid's bow shape here. I want this girl to be a little bit smiling. And the top lip is going to be quite a bit further in. And I want it to be quite high. And it's also 
a Cupid's bow shape. So you can see here she's got this little kind of cute bow thing happening here. Now the bottom lip is not a Cupid's bow. It comes from there, but it's only a flat bottom. You can see that? So that's how we get that nice shape and we want to keep that kind of little bit of a happy look. Now I can get rid of these lines down her face. So she's looking pretty happy, doesn't she? So now I'm going to take a little bit of a curve here and then I'm just going to add some shape to her face. So I'm coming in a little bit here and out a little bit there. I don't want to keep it just a, um, a curve. So give, you know, we have, if you look at someone's face, it goes in and out a little bit there. And you can see I'm just going to have to rub that extra bit of line out. And you can see that I turn my work over, so please do not be scared to turn your work over. Make sure all those lines get cleaned up. Okay, so we have this lovely face. Now I'm going to do her neck quite slim. Now a real neck, to be honest, is about that wide. But we want to do like a little slim neck on this girl. So I'm just going to take... You know, when we're doing these quirky drawings, we can do necks longer than they really are. We can do all sorts of fun things. So it's up to you. But the important thing is these measurements that we have done here is what makes a human believe that it's actually really a face. So that's really important. Okay, so now let's think about some hair. So I'm going to lightly rub that. Now the reason we have this here is because hair doesn't go too much higher unless you have a really buffont kind of hairdo, hair doesn't really go that much below. So hair would go, and this is where you can play around and do different hairstyles. Now I'm just going to put her ears in, and ears I'm just going to do like a little shell shape. But her ears go from her eyes, and they go to the bottom of her nose. Okay, so again on this side, and I'm just doing a very simple shape here, because I think I might do some lovely earrings on this girl. So just before I start to do anything with her hair, I'm going to want to know where that is. And... Um, you can see how I've taken her hair a little bit above that curve, but I haven't taken it too far above the curve. <coughs> Sorry. So if I put her hair way up here, she would have to have a real do happening. So, And also keep to the shape. So don't suddenly do something like that, because that's going to look weird. So... So for this now, I'm going to do some stuff to the eyes. Now eyes are very, very important when you're doing a face. And I'm going to use my watercolours. And do some things to the eyes. Now I need the black first. And I'm going to use my fine watercolour pen, pen. Watercolour brush, sorry. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint her iris, but, sorry, her pupil. But as I do that, I'm going to leave two little white dots in there. Now we do that 
because when somebody has is looking at a photo whatever there or anywhere if you look at someone's eyes there are always highlights so make sure you leave your highlights now if you accidentally do color your highlights in make sure that you um, do put them back in with white your signo broads can be good for that okay and your highlights need to be in the same spot now I think I'm going to do her eyes blue and this is where I really love this mat because I can take some blue and put it down on the mat and I can pick the color up put a little bit of water in it and I'm just going to put some blue down so that's with my Tombow pen now I'm going to leave it a little bit lighter here because I'm going to presume that the light is coming through her eye so I'm doing it a little bit lighter there I love having the Tombows as extra colors to use when I'm doing watercoloring okay now I'm going to take the darker one and just add some darker in the shadow areas okay so we had the very basic color down for her eyes and I'm gonna let this dry a little bit before I do any more because we want to add some detail now with her lips I'm gonna choose a nice kind of bright pink and again it's nice to be able to put it here and I'm going to color her lips even all over at this point in time and then I'm going to take the darker and put a shadow because at this part point in the lips there are there is a shadow same as there's a point where there's a shadow here too so I'm just doing very light filling in giving things to, a time to dry because otherwise we get everything bleeding so we'll play with those lips a little bit more but we'll do that to start off with now I'm going to take quite a big soft brush and I'm going to take this flesh color that I have here and I'm going to put down a bit of flesh color just watered down in all the other areas because I want to get some water down but I might as well get it down with the brush the great thing about watercolors is you can scoop them back up if they end up too dark so make sure if it ends up too dark that you definitely scoop it up and you can just put a paper towel down or you can um, I use baby wipes as well which I will show you in a minute so I'm not worrying too much about getting it completely even at this point and I'm going to put a little bit down here on her neck as well okay so we've got a little bit of color happening there and then I want to make a, this um, I've used some flesh colors here that I've bought and I want certain areas to be darker so I'm going to take the darker one around so the sides of her face need to be a little bit darker so again I'm still using a fair amount of water here and I'm taking this around you can see because I'm using a, a, quite a lot of water it's blending really nice and soft using a big brush too helps it's why when you're learning these things it's sometimes better not to do a tiny little one because it's easier sometimes to do blending on a bigger surface rather than a tiny one so you can see here I'm adding a little bit more because around her face now I'm also going to take a little bit of this down her nose 
Now I'll clean my brush off. What I really want to point out here though is that a nose is shaped like that so we don't want to have this sudden line. One of the things that a lot of people do wrong with faces is this big line next to the nose. So even though I'm going to put a little bit of a shape here, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to smooth that out so that it's not too much. Now if there was a shadow, she might have a more distinct shadow line like that, but it wouldn't be a solid line. So again, and I will even retrieve that line a little bit more with white as I go further. So you can see it's quite, it's quite nice to do this as a layering process. Make sure you paint her ears. I often forget her ears. Now, it's going to be darker in her eye socket. So I'm going to put more of this color in her eye socket. You can see now her face is starting to take on a little bit more shape. Of course, under her nose will be a little bit darker, that little bit there, a crease. You see there I put too much down, but I just clean my brush. So if you're starting off with colouring faces, it is sometimes really good to go and buy yourself some flesh colour watercolours so that you're not doing the whole, I don't know how to paint her face as well as not knowing the right colours. So these are just some flesh coloured watercolours from a craft shop. Now she's a little bit yellow, so I'm going to start adding some other colours to her. So one of the things I like to do when I'm doing a face like that is use purple as one of my um, shadows. So I'm going to take some purple here and put it on my mat. And I'm also going to take a little bit of that colour to mix in with it. And you can see I've got a little bit of a sort of a fleshy purple. Now I want a shadow under her chin. That's probably a little bit too purple. So I'm going to take it away. You can see there you can take away. So I'm going to add a little bit more of this colour to it. That's better. Now this kind of looks strange because we haven't got her hair in yet, but this will look more right as we go along. So I'm doing some of this purple in this eye socket. You can see that just makes her eye socket stand out. I'm also going to do some under her eye, just slightly. Okay, again in this eye socket. And I'm really putting it where this eyelid creases. So that's the spot, a little bit on her eye. That's probably a little bit too much. Take that away. So you can just take it away, you know, don't be scared. That's why the watercolour paper is nice to use. And of course there's always a little bit of a shadow under this chin here. And you'll have a shadow line under her hair. And where these sockets are. So you can see how I'm doing building up and building up. I haven't tried to do one layer and getting it right. I've started very light and I'm continuing to build up. There's hardly paint, any paint on my brush, and sometimes I'm almost dry brushing it. So I'm also going to take 
little bit of this pink, mixing it up with hair, and I'm going to do some pink on her cheeks. Because I I, this is not going to be a lifelike picture. So I'm just doing some pink on her cheeks. Okay. This is actually quite relaxing. And you can see here we're not getting that definite nose line that we sometimes get which doesn't look right. So take now I'm going to take my bigger watercolor brush and I'm going to take a little bit more of that purple and mix it in with a little bit more of that flesh color. Now I do wipe my watercolors afterwards. Anyone's wondering. So I'm I want to blend that out. Now you don't have to use purple, you could use grey or a little bit more of an earthy colour. But I want this girl to be a little bit odd, so. So you can see how she's, she's starting to get a face with a bit of shape. And I'm going to put a little bit under her chin. Even a little bit of this in her lips. Now she looks a little stunned at the moment because she doesn't have eyebrows so I'm going to take some of this light brown and I'm going to put, I don't want really dark eyebrows but I'm going to put some eyebrows. Now when you're doing a face you really need to remember that you need all the components sometimes before it looks right. So. Sometimes I get people saying, oh, I don't like how it's looking, but you often will need to get all these components happening. And in this case here, it's, the brown's not really dark enough, so I'll probably have to go over with a pen to make it a little bit more right. And the other thing that now doesn't look right is it's so white around her that she kind of looks quite dark. But what you'll find is as soon as you start to do other colours, she will actually come right. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black and some of this actually skin colour and her eyes, I'm going to put a little bit of that in her eyes because eyes are actually never white. So I'm going to put a little bit in the shadow areas and it's only a little tiny bit. Don't make it too dark if you have Make sure you wipe it up. Okay. So. We are now going to add some colour to her eyes. So, I'm going to take a darker blue. And I'm going to. Now, I waited for that black to dry so I don't get bleeding. Now, take fanning out that darker blue. So if you can see, I fanned it out. And I'm going to just put a little bit there. I don't really want white left. So, doing this side again. And remember with watercolours that it will bleed if there's wet areas around it. 
so sometimes you need to just give it a bit of a heat gun burst. I'm also going to put a tiny bit of this greeny colour into her eyes. Just because I think the light is hitting her eyes. And I'm doing it on the same side. You can see she's getting quite pretty eyes. Now a good thing to do then is just with your Posca pen in white or whichever pen you have that is white to actually give a bit of a line. I'll have to find my pen to do that. Now I've just noticed that her iris on one side, um, her pupil, sorry, on one side is just a bit bigger than the other. So I'm just going to fix that up and also make it a little bit more black. And I'm also going to take this black and do a bit of an eyeliner. And you can see here I need to turn my work. So if you have it stuck to a board and you can't turn it, that does make it difficult. I like a little bit of eyeliner and as I'm doing that I'm also going to take a little bit on her eyebrow. Now if you think that's a little bit dark just give it a little wipe. Watercolours are fabulous for doing fixes. You can see how she's starting to get that kind of pretty look about her. And I'm going to give a little bit of a line there too. Because I do want her to still be a little cartoony. Now you could do this with a pen if you feel more secure using a pen than a brush. So her eyes are looking quite nice and I want to now paint in those nostrils and also that little bit of middle in her mouth. Actually I don't think that needs to be quite so dark. Okay, so she's really coming along. Let's get some lovely hair. Now I want to do something a little bit different with the hair. Rather than just doing plain old normal coloured hair, I'm going to get a big brush and I'm going to do some really wacky coloured hair on her. She doesn't look like the kind of girl who just wants plain old hair. using that line that I've already drawn because it's so transparent. And choosing the blue for the shadows. She almost looks like a mermaid now, doesn't she? Loving that kind of mermaid-y mermaid look. Maybe we'll have to make those pearl earrings, I think. It's 
sometimes this is the fun about art journaling, isn't it? That we can go, oh, we'll make it however we want. I'm going to take it down. I do like that she has a real sort of seashell looks to her. Okay, so she's coming up together. I'm pretty happy with how she's turning out. Please comment in uh, in our comments below and let me know whether you like different styles. So I'm just going to take this and I want her lips to have a little bit more of a puckery sort of shape. So you can see there she's got a little bit more shape to the lips and because I do love her blue eyes I'm going to take my, pos my Tombow pen and just add some more of those little lines in her eyes, a little bit more darkness in blue. So don't be scared to use felt pens, they don't need to be Tombows but felt pens with your colours. And I'm also going to, because my, I don't feel like my black is dark enough, I'm actually going to put, I'm just using a fine liner and I'm adding the black with the fine liner. And you can see all of this is just layers and layers and layers. And I really want to make a little bit more of a dot in her eye on this side because it's not even. And I'm just going to take, oops, the smallest dot of white paint there and I'm also going to put a little bit of white paint here now to give her nose a bit of shape because it is quite flat I'm going to bring her nose forward by using a bit of white So just on these little bits here, her eyelid. And a little line of light. Just like reflect, reflected light through her eye. But this little bit here. That will give your nose a little bit more shape. And sometimes just that little bit of light there. Because that's where the bone sticks out. And I'm going to put some little highlights through that lovely mermaid hair. And let's do some lovely pearl earrings. Right, and now I like to use a fine liner now, especially in a case like this where it is sort of whimsical. I'm going to take a fine liner and I'm going to add some of these lines. Now I didn't do them first, I'm doing them over the top. You see the nose there, no lines up here, that's all we need. Just make sure you have a nice chin she's got her neck it is better to wait till it's completely dry but it's hard to do in a video so
just giving a little bit more shape. Okay. Now I'm going to take a big brush with a really dark blue. Quite a dark blue and I'm going to color the background now I know that's a similar color to her hair but I will be layering it because I want her to be this kind of um, funny when I started I didn't think she was going to be a mermaid but she's told me herself that that's what she is so make sure that you know I want her to stand out so I'm going to do the background as dark as I can, even a darker one here, and then I'm going to flick some water to do like water droplets in the background. I don't want this background to be smooth, it needs to seem like water. I'll turn it over. Okay, so I've got that kind of happening behind her and I'll put some drops of water. That just makes the paint separate. I think I'm going to actually even use some acrylic ink. So I have some acrylic ink here and I'm going to, oops, I don't want it to bleed into her hair, but I do want it to that's looking really watery in the background almost expect to see a seahorse in there Okay, now that will dry a little bit lighter than it is. And now I want to take some more of that white and add some highlights to her hair. Just let it drizzle in. It's just quite nice to let the paint flow a little bit. when you move it because it will run <laughs> oh I'm liking her I'll do little starry bits little bubbles in the wet paint now I'm just using gesso here, but you could use white paint. Okay. I want to give her cheeks a little bit more of a pinkness. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a curl there. And that's a lighter pink I'm using. 
and blending it in a little bit. Just gives her a little bit more of a pinkness. And then I'm wanting to have a little bit more shadow. So this is where I really start to play. I, I want some shadow between her face and her hair just to make it look like it's more 3D. And a little bit there next to her ears. That's probably too much. So if it's too much, wet it down and take it away. And I think I'm going to draw a little shell necklace here. So I think she needs like a, a beaded So I'm going to do a beaded shell necklace. Behind her. And I think that shell necklace needs to be pink, to be honest. So I'm going to take, I'm going to mix here pink acrylic with watercolor. works fine. Just don't put the acrylic into your watercolour. Take your watercolour into your acrylic. So if I want to now use my watercolour, I need to make sure I clean my brush. So I'm going to do a bright pink shell. And I'm going to take some of that colour around there. Now this is just to give her shoulders. And she needs a little bit more of this green here. You can see that I start to play and I start to think, what else does it need? I really love this colour in her hair. So I'm going to take a little bit more. Bring it down. Okay, so I'll just speed up the video so you can watch the rest of what I do to finish this project. So I hope you give it a go because it's lots and lots of fun. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.